Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to explore what's going to happen, or at least what's predicted to happen to the temperatures when we have an increase of the carbon dioxide from the pre-industrial levels of 285 parts per million to a doubling of that of 570 parts per million. Currently, we're close to about 400 parts per million. Now here, one thing that is illustrated by this is that there's a lot of variation in the various models that try to predict what the change will be. Notice a doubling of the carbon dioxide with this first model here predicts a temperature increase of about 0.64 degrees centigrade. This, the next model predicts a temperature increase of about 0.87 degrees centigrade. And the next model predicts a temperature increase of about 1.46 degrees centigrade. The question is, which one is correct and why? And did they consider or take into consideration the fact that water vapor and carbon dioxide is overlapped? And are there other things included in the assumptions that may not be directly attributable to carbon dioxide, but because of the increase in carbon dioxide and what may happen, will that affect other things that then include an increase in the, in the temperatures as well? So there's a lot of factors which we'll revisit. We'll visit those on the next video. But here we want to take a look at at least the assumption is that the vast majority of the increase in the temperature occurs in the first the first so many parts per million as we build up the concentration of carbon dioxide. Once we reach 285 and above and 400 and above, you see that additional increases in the carbon dioxide does not change the temperature as much as it did when we had the initial increases. Of course, these initial increases, were they're always there because naturally there's always carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But just from a theoretical perspective, what if there was no carbon dioxide? How much does carbon dioxide contribute to the greenhouse effect? And that's what we're trying to figure out. So here, what we see with these three models, and those three models are readily, uh, <coughs> you can find those models readily on the internet if you are interested. Notice that they contribute for the first model a temperature increase of 5 degrees centigrade at the initial concentration of 285 parts per million. That's about 15% of the total of 33 degrees centigrade increase of the overall greenhouse effect. So they're contributing 15% of the total to carbon dioxide at these initial levels. The second model contributes a temperature of 7 degrees centigrade to the carbon dioxide, which is 21%, which is more than the entire band of radiation that carbon dioxide can absorb relative to the total radiation emitted from the Earth's surface. So there's got to be some other things that they're considering in the effect of carbon dioxide. And the third model contributes a total of 12 degrees centigrade to the carbon dioxide effect. That seems a bit much, that accounts for more than one-third of the entire effect, and realizing that water vapor can, can absorb virtually 90% of all the radiation that can be absorbed from the Earth's surface, it's then strange that they would contribute 36% of the total greenhouse effect to carbon dioxide. Again, just to point out, there's a lot of different models with a lot of different results. If we now take into account the fact of the enormous overlap between carbon dioxide and water vapor, maybe the true amount may be a lot less than this. As I've indicated on the previous video, when the temperature increases probably somewhere between 2 and 3 degrees centigrade rather than 5 degrees centigrade for the first 285 parts per million, considering there's a great amount of overlap between water vapor and carbon dioxide, and if there wasn't any carbon dioxide, water vapor would already take care of a big portion of that band that currently carbon dioxide take care of, takes care of. So again, this is an illustration of what we think is going to happen, but notice there's not a lot of consensus. There's enormous differences in the approach and the type of models that you use to try and make that prediction. In the end, what is interesting, though, is that the, inc the temperature increase for a doubling of the carbon dioxide from the pre-industrial levels of 285 parts per million to a doubling to 570 parts per million, and making the assumption that currently the increase from 285 to 400 is blamed, in a way, for an increase of about 0.8 degrees centigrade, well, then there isn't much of an increase to be expected for the next increase from 400 to 570. So those are the models. 
We don't know how accurate those models are. That is a very complicated system. And what also needs to be taken into account, which it's not just a simple matter of how well do these gases absorb the radiation that comes from the surface of the Earth, is how much do these gases delay the progression of heat from the surface all the way out to space. The longer the delay is there, and carbon dioxide plays a part in that, the warmer it will be. The slower the heat can transfer to the atmosphere, the warmer it will be at the lower troposphere. And an increase in carbon dioxide will definitely affect that as well. So, those are some of the things that we still have to try to figure out to get a full picture of the effect that carbon dioxide has on the overall greenhouse effect and what portion of the, of the effect can be contributed to carbon dioxide. And as you can see, there's still a lot of controversy and a lot of difference in the way people approach this, this particular uh, calculation. But hopefully, with a few more videos, we'll get down to the bottom of it. And that's our attempt, what we're trying to do here.